Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe, and that's Aaron, and we're at Coach Power, Coach Company, in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Here's our 440. We have broke it yet. We have not been able to break it yet, but we're now going to try our Wilson manifold spacer and our AED 750 modified carburetor. They take a Holley double pumper and make it what it should have been. And we're going to compare that to a 1050 Dominator using a Super Sucker adapter to the 4150 intake. I better back up. Here's our first pass with the Wilson four hole tapered spacer. So we got a really good baseline here on our carburetor test. Let's swap on the big boy. Um, here's our 1050 Dominator that I rebuilt recently on the channel. And here's that 750, so you need to see them side by side. So there we are. And here's our Super Sucker converted spacer that goes 4500 to 4150. Looks like it has a nice transition into the other intake. Not a lot of hangover one way or another, so we're ready for the fat kid.
same though. Yeah. It's the that same as the spacer on the, on the other one. Right, the distribution is better on the other one. See that one? That, that first cylinder is pretty lean. It's, it was pretty lean all the way through the pool. Right. If you try to fatten that one up, you're going you're gonna to fatten another one up too. Numbers of the day? I think so. It's just numbers of the day. Well, can we do a side by side with the 
with that run versus the best for the other? Versus 81, 79 versus 73, 80 versus 63. You know, if you average it, it's probably probably five foot pounds. This thing's probably five foot pounds better across the board. Yeah. And there we are. Our, our best peak was. 750 with the spacer, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. We picked up, yeah. On the torque? Yeah. 81, 73, 80, 76. That's a pretty nice curve. This was a little more erratic over here. You can tell it's not as happy. It's bouncing right. around. We got a 579, but that's an anomaly number because you back. You got a 57 and a 63 on both sides of it. You got a right. 68 here, 78. So it just seems like a, the Dominator actually moved the, moved the peak torque up. Looks like about couple hundred RPMs, believe it or not. Usually that requires an intake manifold or a cam chain. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Shove that fuel down there. Well, the day is done and they're loading the 440 up. What do you think, Aaron? I think it was a good day. We didn't leave any oil on the dyno floor. We didn't spring any major leaks. We didn't lean anything out. We didn't detonate anything. Didn't blow anything up? No, that was a great day on the dyno right. cell. Dyno didn't break, I mean. Are you a uh, Chrysler man yet? You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to go that far. I will say that I started out a Chrysler guy, and then I migrated, and, and now I'm coming back around. I love, I love, I love all internal combustion engines equally. We're a non-denominational shop here. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty denominational. Thank you all very much, Aaron. I'll Thank see you next you. time. Appreciate you. All right, that kind of concludes our Dyno 440 sessions. I got one more I'm gonna to try to get out that compares those oil filters for you. Until then, I'm gonna announce the winner. We ended up at 581 torque and 565 horsepower. So comment under this video or send me an email at justmoparjoe at gmail.com. I'm gonna show y'all real quick what I got going on behind me here. You may wanna know what's up. Here's baby, our little 400 that was on the dyno the first time. I got my uh, stealth heads on here and uh, I got to switch and put a truck pan on. So I got my truck pan ready to roll. I thought I might show you that. There's our 512 looking happy over here. And we got to get a little blue truck going soon. So I appreciate y'all watching and I will catch you next time.